Now it's time to create our real landscape, the one that we're actually going to use moving forward. So we'll get stuck straight in. Let's have a look. So we're going to move over to the landscape tool once again. Okay, so you can see that mine has remembered what I was doing in the previous step. It wants me to use the height map, which I don't want. So I'm going to go to create new. And then we get, oh, hello, where have I gone? There we go. Get up there. Right, so this is the default size, which is far too big. This is not what I want. So I'm going to have a section size of 31 by 31, which is there. So this is now going to be much more manageable. I like that. And the height on the Z axis, I'm going to put back to 100 because I just like everything to be at the default other than what I change. So I'm happy with that, I think. Although I do want to change the other things that were changed by the height map. So my number of components is now no longer set to 8 by 8 So in fact, I'm going to use this little arrow here to set that back to default. That's better. Um, and the overall resolution of 249 by 249 is good. Total components 64. So I will create that. Groovy. Okay. So let's zoom in on this a little bit. Interestingly, it's not giving me the um, grid lines, which is nice, I guess. Usually I get those. So that's good. And the first thing I actually like to do when I create a new landscape is to have a little run around that landscape just to get a feel for the scale of it. So that when I'm sculpting hills and things, I've got the right scale in mind when I'm doing that. So the first thing I would do or would normally do is click on play. But as you should notice, that causes us to fall through the floor and we just fall forever. And the reason for that is that the player start, let me just go back to place mode for a moment. The player start, I'll just press F, is kind of halfway through the floor, which means that the feet aren't colliding with it, so he's gonna fall. So before you can move it out of the ground, what you might need to do is turn your move tool on. So you can see mine's on by default, and yours probably is too, but if it isn't, the way that you can turn it on is by clicking on this icon here, or as it tells you there, you can press the W key and that will turn it on and then you can move it up so move it up out of the floor like that and now when I press play my character will be able to stand on that there we go so this now I'll just have a little run around just real quick just to get a feel for how big this is and I can see it is quite big it's big enough for my needs um, and how long is it going to take me to get to the edge quite a while so this tells me what I need to do to create my hills and stuff. So I'm just going to hit escape. There we go. Zoom out a touch. And then we can start sculpting on this. Okay, so the first tool I'm going to use on this, back over to landscape, is a sculpt tool. I want a strength of 0.1, like that. And I'm going to have a brush size of 2048, because I quite like that size for this particular exercise. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just start by sculpting the edges. I'm just going to bring them up like so. And I'm just going to bring it up gradually. So I could, again, as I've said, I could use um, a stronger setting on my brush. But I kind of want this random building up of what I'm doing. So what I do is I just tend to click and drag quite often and I just allow this to build up so you can see I'm just building it up repeating the same thing really but I'm just trying to get a little bit of variety in what I'm doing by just being a bit haphazard about things there we go I'll put some detail over there I might want to just move over there for this like so in fact, it is taking a little bit longer than I thought, so I'm just going to increase the strength of my brush just to get this done a little bit quicker. I actually still would recommend um, using a lower setting, but we're going to be here all day, aren't we, if I faff about with that. So let's just get some nice hilly terrain going around the edge. And the reason I'm doing it around the edge is because I don't want the player to be able to see off the edge of the world. It's just unnerving if you feel like you can fall off the world. So as you can see, I'm just going to keep building it up over and over until I'm happy that I've got something interesting. Get something up in the corner there. 
And it doesn't matter too much if I overdo it because I can always come back in with the smooth tool or I can reduce the height of things later. Let's just bring that bit up as well. Um, yeah, I think a little bit more over here. Like that. Right, so I think I'm happy with that. But the most important thing is what it looks like to the player. So at this stage, I'm going to hit play and just have a little look around um, to see what I think of this. And it mostly looks okay. I think this area here, I'm not incredibly happy about. So I'm just going to give that a little bit more love. I'm just going to bring something up here, I think. Like that. And I think just bring my brush size down a little bit. Just to add a little bit more variety to this area. I don't want it to look too samey. Okay, let's have another look around now. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. So, that's the first kind of pass. I've done a sculpt around the edge, just so the player can't see that the world is quite finite. So, that's that. What I will also do, just briefly, you can see I've got my settings turned down when I preview this. Because my laptop sucks. It sucks so hard. Um, so I've got my settings turned down on the engine scalability settings, which if you've got underpowered hardware, you might also need to do. But because I've got this turned down to low, the resolution scale is at 25%, which is why everything looks blocky. So I'm just going to turn that up and have another look. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Right, so what we need to do next is add a little bit of erosion to make these peaks we've created look more natural. So I like to start with the thermal erosion and I've already been playing with this tool so it's kind of already set up as I want it to be so you should match my settings if you want to get the same results as me or you can experiment with them which is also cool so you can see my tool strength is going to be 0 0.1 because again I don't want to overdo it my threshold I've got set to 128 the surface thickness is set to 512 which are kind of the max values for both of those I've got iteration set to 28 noise mode is on lower and the noise scale is set to 60 as well. So then what I'm going to do is using this, I'm just going to up the size of my brush again. So I'm going to do 2048. And I'm just going to paint over everywhere that I have created peaks on. And again, I'm just doing this to try and get a more natural look so that it looks like, you know, land has been transferred downhill, been attacked by time and stuff. So I'm just going to give everything a damn good painting so that it looks super sexy. Come on, paint that bitch up real nice. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, what we'll get over here. That's it. And all I'm doing really is I'm just trying to make these hills not look too fake like they've been created by the sculpt brush. And you could go over this for as long as you want. Um... But be careful just not to overdo anything. So this area here is going to be kind of nice, I think, when I'm done with it. Get this area again. Cool. So that looks kind of nice, I think. So again, the thing that is most important to me is that when I play it, things look cool. Um, and the bit I'm not happy with is this area here. So I'm going to get stuck into this a bit more. I'm going to bring that down a bit. I'm going to let this erode down as well. Because it just doesn't look right. Let's bring that down. Yeah, come on, erode. Get eroded. Yeah. Let's have another look at that. Yeah, that's better. And what I like, if you can see, this little kind of indentation here has been created by that erosion. That's all the erosion tool. So it's adding in extra detail as well. Okay, so I'm happy with the thermal erosion what i also want to add an extra level of detail and realism is i'm going to go at it with the hydro erosion tool as well and again i've already changed some settings you can see all of these ones with backwards arrows on them i can undo to put them back to default but i want them at this so you can see tool strength 0 0.1 always recommend that main amount 256 which is the max sediment capacity which is kind of how much slurry and well sediment has been carried down by the water as it's run from high ground um, and I've also changed the scale as well because 12 looked better. 
So I'm just going to repeat the same process. You've got to be more careful with this tool where the slope meets the flatter ground because you can overdo it quite easily. So I'm just going to start kind of painting down. And you can see already this area here, it's having an effect on it. It's just creating little areas where water might have rested or might have trickled down between where different peaks have met. Oh, hello. So I'm just going to keep bringing this down. And I just really want to be careful not to overdo this. And just keep it looking nice and cool. Okay, so this guy up here is quite high up, so I'm going to have to make sure it looks like some water's run down from there. Okay, I'll keep going like that. Yep, I'm pretty happy with that. Yep, I'm going to bring this in over here as well. Okay, so I've kind of been all the way around. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, as always, I'm going to have a little look as I play it, make sure nothing looks too odd. No, that looks pretty cool. I like that. So, that's it for erosion. The last bit of sculpting I want to do to this terrain is I want to get some noise in there. And the noise, I'll just put it back into play mode again, is for this flat area here. I'm trying to create an area that looks like it's outside, kind of a meadow sort of area. And whilst I want it to be mostly flat, if it's perfectly flat, it's going to look odd, um, which I want to avoid. So, in order to avoid that, I'm going to go to my noise tool and again you can see that i've had a little mess around with the settings so i've got my tool strength quite low because this is something you don't want to overdo because if things look too bumpy it's weird for the player um i've got my noise scale set to 64 and my brush size is set to um 24 again and what i'm going to do to avoid overdoing it is i'm just going to click once in most areas of my little plateau area in the center it doesn't matter if you go over the, the kind of hilly area as well. Because all you're really doing with noise is adding a bit of kind of random variety to the height. So it's not going to hurt anything. So I'm just going to let that build up. And it's kind of hard to see from up here what effect you've had. So I'm going to press play and go in. And it's subtle. But if you follow the kind of lines on the grid lines that are there. You can see that now this height has changed a little bit. And it's not perfectly flat as you look around. Which is the effect I wanted. And I could continue to tweak that. I could give it a little more in places, a little bit less in places. But that actually is pretty nice. I'm quite happy with that. So that will do it for noise then. And there's one final thing I want to do. And what that is, is smooth. So I'm going to put my smooth tool on. And I try to save this until the end. And what I'm looking for is anywhere where the height changes too drastically and looks ugly to look at. So maybe some areas like this might have been overdone. Or I don't, I'm not a massive fan of these little craters that get created around the bottom as well. So my tool strength is going to stay at 0 0.1. Um, and I'm going to leave everything else at default. And I'm just going to, again, I'm just clicking once here. Because I don't want to overdo this and smooth out all the detail that I've spent time putting in. This is just to get it under control. It's not to remove it. Like that. So... These areas at the bottom are particularly, I'm not a massive fan of if they're overdone. So you can see I'm just smoothing those out a little bit. I'll just give that a few clicks up there as well. That looks quite harsh. I'm kind of letting the shadows guide me on this. If, if anything looks too shadowy, I'm going to try and just smooth it out a little bit. And just around the bottom here. There we go. There's no better than a smooth bottom. <laughs> It's right though, isn't it? Okay, so that's kind of pretty good now. So I've smoothed things, I've added erosion, I've got some peaks. I've tried not to overdo it. This is going to be um, kind of hilly terrain, kind of towards rocky hills, but I'm not going for mountains because for the scale I'm working at, it would look odd. So I'm pretty happy with that for the terrain. There is one final step that you could do. I actually don't think I need it because I don't think any areas look like they're going to be an issue for me. Maybe um, this area over here could be. Um, but that is you could use the retopologize tool, which if you think you've got any inclines that are particularly harsh, you might just want to retopologize those just to reduce texture stretching later. But you don't have to do that now. If once you've applied your material to the landscape later, you see the texture stretching, you can always retopologize it then, so there's no rush on that. Okay, so at this stage, I'm now going to save this as another version. So let me just go back to 
place mode. I'm going to go file, save current as, and it's called level underscore chapter two. So this is the end of chapter two that I'm saving. So those of you that are working from my files for any reason, you can now get access to that one. That will pop up. Oh, hello. Oh, that's fine. That's one I've used earlier. Okay, so that is now saved for all the patrons. If you want to get access to that, it's available for you at any point. Okay, so that wraps up uh, the introduction to the landscape tool. So moving forward, we'll be going into materials. So I'll see you in the next step where we'll start looking at materials. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your learning further, I recommend an introduction to Unreal Engine 4 by Andrew Sanders and Unreal Engine 4 Game Development Essentials by Satish PV. Check them out using the links in the video description below. Special thanks to my awesome patrons whose names are displayed on screen for supporting this video. If you'd also like to support my channel, then go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.